Okay, so we're talking about ecosystems on this lesson. So uh, you guys have been, done a great job saying that an ecosystem can be divided into two parts. The living, which you call the biotic, biotic and the non-living, which you call the abiotic. So here's my question. Here's a pencil. It is a trick question. Is this pencil biotic or abiotic? Abiotic. abiotic. Really? Abiotic. Bi oh, really? Biotic? Abiotic? Biotic. Oh, Tell me abiotic. Oh, abiotic? Wait, no, actually, it's, what? it's abiotic because trees live and that came from the tree. So the wood in this is abiotic. Biotic. biotic. Because it came from a tree, trees were living, it started as a seed, grew, developed, right? Mm -hmm. But the paint and the metal, metal is and the eraser are abiotic. So I told you it was a trick question, but excellent so that uh, so when you look at an ecosystem what are some of the abiotic things in the ecosystem always the smart kids uh, you know raising their hands here man what? yes what are some of the abiotic things yes uh, like streams like the water yeah the water excellent streams what else yes like abiotic abiotic things in the ecosystem like the ground the dirt, the ground, although people, scientists don't like to say the word dirt, <laughs> the soil, and even the temperature or the air. There might be living things flying in the air, there might be living things swimming in the water, but the water, the air, the rocks, the soils are abiotic. There might be things living in them. Organisms interact. And so there's, when you read about this, there's a lot of different ones. Like sometimes something gets good and something gets bad. So I call that a plus minus. Sometimes it's a plus plus, and sometimes it's an equal equal, like a bird living in a tree. Does the, does the tree get hurt? No. So that'd be equal. Does the bird get something by putting his nest up in a high tree? Yes. That'd be a plus. Now what if it's a bird and a woodpecker? Brr, brr, would that be a plus equal or something else? Plus plus, no, it'd be plus equal. minus. You plus say, minus, minus. why a plus, plus for the bird gets a home, why a minus for the tree? Because he packs wood, it allows injury, damage, fungus to come into the tree. Like, I don't want a woodpecker living in my house or my tree, although I do like to see him. So, Mr. Uh, Bosley at one of the schools actually said, where is the energy flow in this interaction? He started with the sun and her class, his class did a whole thing on where does all the energy of a McDonald's Happy Meal come from. And why did he start with the sun? Mr. Way, I'll give you a hand. If you and I are ever on a show Jeopardy or Who's Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, the answer is, what is the sun, okay? Because the sun sends energy to the earth, and who takes the energy in first? The plants. The plants, what are they called? What's that word of a plant that can make energy? New word, okay, good. Producer. We're going to talk about that today. A producer. Mr. Wade, come over here. Are you hungry? I'm always hungry. We're always kind of hungry. So if we were green plants, here's all we'd have to do. Get over here. Let's... Ah, thanks. Oh, man. I'm the energy from the sun. Uh, but are you still hungry? No. You, you, can, you can soak up energy from the sun? Yeah. You can? Yeah. <laughs> but he'd be a producer. Actually, green <laughs> plants, you need chlorophyll. You have any chlorophyll with you? Uh, no, 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 so, no, no. So you know what, he, what we have to do? He and I have to go and eat producers. That makes us consumers. So the sun, and check it out here. The sun, the sun sends energy down. Plants grow, plants are producers. And then along come animals that consume that. Go ahead, next slide there. Let's see, uh, here it is, Mr. Stanley. You might want to try this. Here's what he did. He got kids, got pictures, and they're showing where all the energy is going. You mentioned that earlier about food chains and food webs. Next. Now, <laughs> my friend, Mr. Dunlap. I said, I said, Mr. Dunlap, I need this picture to share with the whole world. Send me something really amazing. <laughs> so he sends me this picture. I'm thinking, my first thought was, really, Mr. Dunlap, really? But then I thought, no, this is very cool. Who can explain the energy interactions of this picture? Yes, in a loud voice, tell me. Um, the sun, that 
the plant produced yes. food for the rabbit and the rabbit eats it and it's a consumer and the plant is a producer. Excellent. So I would have added one more thing. I would have added a hawk flying in. So we have primary, we have a sun, a producer, a consumer, and then if a hawk eats that, it's either a secondary consumer or a tertiary, meaning at the top. So he did a good job. Minimalist, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Cave, I love Mr. Cave. He clicked next. Here's click what he did. No, don't click on that one. He, he, he always does it the same way. Check oh. this out. Oh. And why is that a plus? Why is this a plus minus? Yes, in the back. Who's getting something out of this relationship? The lion is plus because it gets food for for whoever it is, mm -hmm. whoever it's in its family, and the zebra is a minus because that's the one that's getting food. <laughs> yeah, but now I love this also this picture. This I've been in Africa on safari, and here we have the grasslands. So once again, what causes all this energy flow? The sun. the sun. The sun makes the grasses grow. You add the rains, and the rain seasons move across the Serengeti. So the grasses grow, the grasses grow. The herbivores, herb means, vor means to eat. The herbivores follow the green grasses. What's the Spanish word for meat? Carne. 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 So if you are a meat eater, guess what you're called? Carnivore. 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 So here is an herbivore eating grass. Here is a carnivore plus minus. So today we're going to talk about how do living things interact. But our big question is, how do some Indiana organisms interact? In your book, you're going to talk about we have forests in Indiana. Our forests are mostly called deciduous. That means the leaves fall off the trees. But there's other kind of trees, right? What are some of the other trees besides the ones that the leaves? Yes. Pine trees. A pine tree, which is an evergreen. So in Indiana, we might have the sun, plants, like a deciduous tree that grows acorns, a squirrel that eats the acorn, and then a hawk that eats the squirrel. The energy, see how the energy flows? And then all those things, when they die or decompose, other bacteria recycles the nutrients. What I love about this image is it starts with the sun, right? The sun's energy and heat goes to the producers. And to be a producer, that means you are a... Uh, my producer is making the... Like, makes, yeah, makes the food. Makes the food. So that means you're a green plant, right? Of some sort. And then here is a vole. Another name for a vole is a meadow mouse. And in a couple of weeks, your teacher received some owl pellets. And those owl pellets are filled with voles. You're going to be taking those apart. And you'll probably be finding critters like this that eats the grass. And then what eats the vole? The weasel. And what might eat the weasel? The owl. The owl. And all of those give off heat. And all of those, when they decompose or their droppings or feces, all hit the ground and they get recycled back for the producers to use. And so wherever you go, whatever biome you're at, whether it's a tropical rainforest biome, you can recognize the food chains or the food webs. Um, this one, when I was a kid, I lived in Arizona. I used to love to go out into the desert and around the saguaro, the yucca plants chasing lizards, bobwhite quail. I would try to catch a roadrunner. I would not catch a roadrunner. They do run. <laughs> um, but I would catch the lizards and I would look at uh, the different uh, different cacti and the different animals. And that is a that one is a hot dry biome. Yes. Have you like ever like very cold. Now you would think life would not be so good there. But it is because the sun and all these animals their waste go in the water and diatoms from the sun and small krill, billions of little things live that are eaten by more things, that are eaten by bigger things, producers, consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and the killer whale. You take out one thing, will that affect the food web? Yes. 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 And some in not a good way. Coral reefs, once again, all these things will not survive unless one thing is there. What is that one thing? Uh, what? The sun. The sun. In fact, a coral reef, you only find those 
into like 100 feet, 150 feet or less. When it's deeper, why won't you find coral reefs at 400 feet, 500 feet? Because there's no sun. The sunlight, it's dark. it's dark, right. And so that sun cannot energize or power a whole system here. Um, this one, I, I spent a couple weeks in Africa on safari with the grasses. We saw that about the grasses and how the herbivores follow the grasses. Who follows the herbivores? Um, what? The carnivores. The carnivores, right? Yeah. Okay, so the grass grow. These guys eat the grass. <laughs> and then the carnivores follow them. Uh, we don't have too much of this. Up in Michigan and Canada is a, a type of forest that's mostly evergreen, pine trees, but we do have a deciduous forest in Indiana. And so this is a typical Indiana food chain. And what I'd like you to do is to research, and we actually have a structure here that, uh, that I made that talks with the sun and producers and consumers and going on through. And so let's take a look. So that's what you're gonna do. Let's take a look. This is the Indiana Department of Natural Resources website. And there's a whole bunch. We have fish, Mr. Way, you and we have birds, mammals, uh, amphibians, reptiles, and aquatic animals. I want you to pick one of these. Which one do you wanna pick, Mr. Way? Let's just pick one for a demonstration purpose. Any mammal? Mountain lion. Mountain lion, okay, oh, click on mountain lion. The last mountain lion in Indiana, um, it, the puma, it's also called wildcat, it's sometimes called cougar, puma, <coughs> catamount, and panther. They once lived in Indiana, but the last one that was in Indiana was in the 1800s. So if you pick that one, where are you going to put that on the food chain? Uh, where? Yeah, at the very top. And so your job is to find if that's the predator, what are the prey that go under it? Let's pick one more, Mr. Way. Maybe one that, uh, that's still, still, living. Is still living. The last bear, there was actually a bear seen in Indiana. The last bear hunted in Indiana, I think was shot in, in the early, uh, maybe 70, 80 years ago in Brown County. But they, I heard on the news that a bear from Michigan meandered over into Indiana. Northern for, Indiana, yeah. Northern Indiana. Oh, coyotes. Coyote? I saw a coyote two days ago on the way to this school. He was out in the middle of the highway out in uh, where I live out in uh, the west of here, and there was a coyote trying to cross the road. So coyotes are everywhere.